So I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like every celebrity has a book club these days. And I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> Why are book clubs so hot at the moment? And why is every celebrity, mostly female celebrities, starting them? Let's have a look, shall we? Hello and welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Ray. What Ray reads, follow me on Instagram. Today we're sitting here to discuss why there's a boom in celebrity book clubs. Mabel's decided to join us today. She's just absolutely riveted to find out about celebrity book clubs. Yet yeah, I read an article in the cut that was titled, why does every famous woman have a book club now? Question mark. And so before we get in, you're like, Rachel, maybe you're bet blowing this out of proportion. There's not really that many people who have book clubs. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. I'm gonna give you a short list of names of celebrities who have book clubs. Oprah, Reese Witherspoon, Emma Roberts, Emma Watson, Dakota Johnson, Kaya Gerber, Florence Welch from The Machine, Sarah Jessica Parker, Natalie Portman, and singer of my teenage years, A. Marie. So in the article by Emily Gold, she basically looks into why there's currently a big boom in celebrities with book clubs. And having looked myself and being involved in the book community, I can't help but notice that a lot of them are actresses. From Reese Witherspoon to Emma Watson, Natalie Portman, Emma Roberts and most recently Dakota Johnson. A lot of these popular book clubs are created by actresses who want to get into the bookfluencer sphere and this is something that I've noticed from people in the book community that I follow and they're not too fond of. So I'm like, what's the tea? What the fuck is going on in here on this day? What's going on? Why the leap? Writing for the BBC, Rebecca Thomas wrote back in 2017, these celebrities want to show that they're intelligent people and not just celebrities. That's perhaps the motive. But I'm thinking surely it can't just be that sole reason for the ego and their image. I think if you look at someone like Reese Witherspoon, who's probably the most notable celebrity with a book club, and you can see how lucrative that's been for her. She basically revived her career by starting her book club and the production company Hello Sunshine, having the book club and then optioning the books that she was reading and producing them to create roles for herself in successful movies and TV series and she said she did this because acting roles for women who were past the age of 30s were getting fewer and far between for someone who's even an Oscar winning actress like her. Some of the titles that she's helped create are Big Little Lies, iconic, Gone Girl, another iconic one, Wild, which she received an Oscar nomination for, Little Fires Everywhere, Daisy Jones and the Six, and where the crawdads sing and these were all really popular books that were only enhanced in popularity with Reese's seal of approval and they ended up on bestsellers lists and she brought them to a new audience by producing and adapting them so maybe a lot of other actresses have seen what Reese has done and they thought I want a slice of that. I want to be able to have a hook in the book and publishing sphere and create roles for myself, interesting, dynamic roles. Or maybe they were just like... <laughs> My turn! Or the less cynical side of me is like, maybe they just like reading. Is it just that though? Gold goes on to say in the cut article, Reese Witherspoon's been the canniest about monetizing her taste in books creating a business where her monthly pics are sent out in a newsletter and proclaimed on a website as well as optioned by her production company Hello Sunshine which she recently sold to Blackstone Group for 90 million dollars. Making her book club pics into movies and TV shows is clearly the driving force behind Witherspoon's club but she's also used the idea of being bookish to burnish her image. Being a guru with industry clout on the production side gives Witherspoon a plausible next chapter of 47, an age when acting roles begin to become scarcer for women. And I think a lot of actresses who don't like how the roles are becoming scarcer or they don't like the type of roles they're getting as the mother, mother. or the wife, 
they're seeing this as an opportunity to tell more diverse and dynamic stories and it's a chance for them to find their own roles if no one's going to do it for them but as well as that it creates another revenue stream for them because they may not charge to join the book club but if publishers know that you know this celebrity with a large following is drawing a lot of attention there's going to be a financial incentive there. Witherspoon speaks about her book club to the New York Times and she says when I was about 34 I stopped reading interest and scripts she goes on when there's a big economic shift in the media business it's not the superhero movies or independent films we lose out on it's the middle which is usually where women live the family drama the romantic comedy so I decided to fund a company to make those kinds of movies Reese Witherspoon's leap into the book fluencer sphere can't be ignored not only has her book club become incredibly lucrative and successful like you only have to go around the book shop and you see you know hair brand seal of approval a lot of hair book club picks land on bestsellers lists and in 2023 hair picks outpaced oprah's book club picks in print sales and that's a big deal speaking of oprah <laughs> Oprah is who you think of when you think celebrity book clubs and she's kind of in pop culture known as the person who sort of started that extra side hustle if you will for celebrities. <laughs> In 1996, Oprah started the Oprah Book Club as part of her chat show and its success is something a lot of celebrities want to follow. In an article for the New York Public Library, librarian Laura Stein, she talks of the Oprah effect. She says, in 1996, she turned her passion for reading into something to share with others. She began to curate books for her followers to read, an eclectic mix of new and classic literature with a heavy emphasis on black female authors. Every time Oprah released her latest pick, sales of that book would skyrocket and modestly selling titles would become bestsellers within a week. Never before or since has a television personality so influenced the reading public. Oprah inspired new readers, supported authors of colour and worked with public schools and libraries to make sure copies got into everyone's hands. So obviously Oprah was doing it for the love of reading but she also wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to read which not many of these newer book clubs do. Sorry, that's the truth. Ah, uh -huh, not my problem. Due to Oprah's visibility as a massive celebrity, having her support your book would literally, it could send a more obscure title to critical acclaim. And a lot of obscure titles did become bestsellers purely from being featured on Oprah's book club. Celebrities like Reese Witherspoon and Emma Roberts have used their influence and following on social media to share what they're reading with the fans and the followers. Emma Roberts is someone that I personally remember being probably the first celebrity that I recall sharing what she was reading. This was before she even had her own book club. She'd always share what books she was reading, which, you know, isn't quite what many of the other celebrity book clubs are doing. So I think she's someone who does have a love of reading prior to start in the book club and this is something that many people myself included do within the book community that's the whole purpose of it sharing what you're reading with like-minded people and getting inspiration on what to read next from people who have similar diverse tastes so you know if you like fantasy or thrillers you could follow people who share a lot of those the difference between smaller creators in the book community and a big celebrity is how lucrative it can be because I don't personally know many people in the book community even if they have like a fairly large following that is making an income from it or is making a lot of money help me i'm poor whereas celebrities already come to this with privilege and money and reach so they are joining you know a smaller sub community and making it more lucrative for them and some may say that you know they're making it less about the passion of the book and more about what's most popular or what's going to give them money or deals. James Hacking writes for Forbes in his article A Celebrities Becoming Influencers, What Are the Consequences for Brands? Influencers showed how to build an audience and use social platforms to be creative and drive engagement. With celebrities now leaning into this culture to create an impact on social media, often with a wider reach, this opens up a new era, so maybe that 
that's something that can explain why we're seeing more celebrities with traditional celebrity careers like acting or singing leaning into different avenues and aspects of the influencer sphere in this case it's the book community but you only have to go on any celebrity's profile and you'll find that they will be sharing other hobbies or interests of theirs in a way that's an extra way to monetize or seem just like you imagine there's no heaven no thank you i have personally seen a lot of people in the book community talk about their frustrations with bigger celebrities coming into a smaller sub community like booktube or book talk because if people with more success and more of a following join the book community, which it is quite a niche community, then it's going to impact smaller creators and a lot of the book influencers or influencers in the book community are considered micro influencers. So, you know, they have smaller followings and smaller communities. But if someone, say like Reese Witherspoon or Emma Watson joins, then, you know, they've got millions of followers. That's millions of eyes. Publishers will be more inclined to do business with them purely for the fact that the reach is just grander so then smaller creators become less impactful in what they're sharing and that brings me on to another trend that I've seen of celebrities slowly blurring the lines and becoming more like influencers <laughs> celeb influencers, if you will. Now, some may say celebrities have always been influencers, and yeah, you may be correct, they somewhat have, but I'm talking about like the new type of influencer that was born online on social media. Celebrities were more elusive, you only knew what they wanted you to know. <laughs> Whereas now, most celebrities have a social media presence and they use that to their advantage. And a lot of them are doing brand deals and sponsored posts. They're not just go watch my movie or go buy my single. They're doing ads and that's something that was sort of traditionally for influencers or socialites like the Kardashians who don't actually have a skill. Drag her. But that line, and it's been sort of getting spoken about a lot for a few years now, is blaring and I think we're only going to see it happen more so with traditional celebrities. Again in the Forbes article, Hacking writes, a cultural shift is taking place before our eyes. Influencers are leaning into celebrity culture while more traditional celebrities are going viral on social media. This means brands need to move with the times and tap into a new era of talent collaborations. And I think with the way celebrity culture and social media is changing with the likes of TikTok and Instagram, Instagram followings holding more importance to collaborations and brands. We'll just simply continue to see celebrities leaning more into that because it's a quick way for them to make money and celebrities have always had like brand deals as an extra revenue stream. And I think some are clearly leaning into it just purely for revenue and money. It's a big paycheck for them, but others are diversifying their interests or showcasing their interests to the fans to make themselves seem more desirable, complex which is one of the reasons why Gen Z and things like that prefer influencers or smaller creators to the traditional celebrity because they're just like them. They're just a regular person. Again, hacking rights. Celebrities like these who are increasingly demonstrating relevance through viral content are becoming more attractive to brands who want to tap into their audience. And this reminds me of something I read a while ago. It was like an interview with the actress Saoirse Ronan and she said that she got past over for a role in a big film because she didn't have a social media presence so she didn't have any followers or eyes for promotional purposes and the role was given to someone else who wasn't as good of an actress but had a big social media presence and more recently there was something Cardi B posted that went a bit viral on TikTok that was about celebrities and influencers competing for the same brand deals as the economy's struggling. Oh and I'm gonna give you some tea right now Right now, right now, I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all influencers know some tea right now. Right now, right now, that's going on. The economy is bad. The economy is bad. If y'all notice, and if y'all go to a lot of artists, fuck influencers. If you go to a lot of artists, a lot of artists are not getting brand deals right now. Brands are broke right now. Brands are broke. So y'all are competing with artists. 
when it comes to getting money. And for actresses and musicians, that's one of the reasons is because streaming has become so prominent that they're not making quite as much money as they're traditionally used to with the likes of cinema releases or traditional album releases. Most people don't buy physical copies of things or a lot of people don't even go to the cinema, which I can't believe because I love going. They're more inclined to just stay at home and stream it and celebrities don't get a cut of that as they once did with like DVD sales and things like that. So it's changing the way celebrities have to navigate making the money that they're used to. Large quantities. And you only have to go on to like the biggest celebrities profiles and you'll see that every one of them, there's literally very few of them that aren't doing paid partnerships or brand deals that they're posting ads for. The lines are blurring, as I said, and it's just going to continue to blur with Gen Z and Gen Alpha, who are more bought into social media creators and content creators that may have a smaller following, but they admire them for different reasons to the traditional celebrity. Antonio DeSantis writes on Medium, unlike traditional celebrities who are often seen as distant and unrelatable, Gen Z influencers have embraced authenticity as a core value. They share personal stories, thoughts and experiences, allowing their followers to connect with them on a deeper level. This authenticity resonates with Gen Z, who value genuine connections and seek relatability in an online world. So I did see there was a trend going around recently of saying that traditional celebrities, like the days are numbered, because Gen Z and the youth of today that are on social media, they don't admire traditional celebrities that are incredibly privileged and they're placed on a pedestal of extreme privilege and admiration and the youth of today, they're not as into it. They're like, mm, you're not authentic and we're not supporting you. Okay, work. With this shift in mind, we can sort of see why we're seeing celebrities branch off and join smaller communities like the book community. And they want to diversify their brand to seem more interesting or like they have more to offer to a brand and to followers. And in my opinion, some book clubs by celebrities hold more appeal or confidence than certain others. And I feel like I can tell, and I don't know if other book lovers can tell, but you can sort of gauge who doing it just to have an extra side to themselves that seems you know I'm just like you or I need to make a little extra money and the ones who genuinely love reading. Personally I think Reese Witherspoon, Emma Roberts and recently Dua Lipa are people who you can tell are passionate about reading and stories and they share books that have truly impacted them whereas the certain other book clubs that I feel like did the celebrity even read that book? She's got a point. And although a lot of them do have the book clubs attached to other ventures that can make it more lucrative like Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine, she produces the book Emma Roberts has Bellatrust, which I think has a brand of a production company also. And then there's Dua Lipa, who has Service 95, which is more like a lifestyle sort of newsletter where she talks about books, films, culture and food and things like that. I do believe the platform and work that they believe in and admire. So I do hold more trust in their choices of books compared to certain other book clubs. <laughs> There are certain celebrities who have a book club or the pictured or share book related content where I think it seems more like an aesthetic reason. They want to seem, I'm not like other girls, I'm more interesting, I'm well read. And I'd say they have more of like an aesthetic forward approach to sharing what they're reading. And Emily Gold writes a game for the cut. Beyond the realm of clubs, there's also celebrities who simply want to be seen reading books ideally good ones. In this category we find the professionally gorgeous people like Kaya Gerber and Kendall Jenner which leads me to the other side of the celebrity book clubs and book fluencers and I think this is the type that is kind of enraging the smaller book community creators because it doesn't seem genuine and I don't know how it was revealed but upon doing my research I discovered that apparently Kendall Jenner has a book concierge. I'll repeat that again. Kendall Jenner has a book concierge. <laughs> Just... I have to laugh. So you're to tell me you love reading but you can't pick your own books. Okay. 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 
sure and not only does she pick the books for her she annotates them as well so i'm lost for words i can't and again continuing in the cut article gold writes the poet ashley gonzalez is widely acknowledged to be jenna's book concierge tasked with supplying the model and reality star with grammable literature Anyway, moving on. Similar to Kendall Jenner, the model and actress Kaya Gerber has a book club and as discussed by Emily Gold in the Dead article, having a young attractive model influencer pictured with your book, yeah, it may sort of draw eyes to the book, but it doesn't impact the print sales in the way that Reese Witherspoon or Oprah recommending it would. But in the article, she speaks to a book agent who says seeing the person model or a young actress with a book does create a bit of buzz for it. But she says it did make us feel the novel had momentum and buzz at a crucial time in its publication, which I think also encouraged the publishers to double down on their publicity and marketing efforts. She went on, we are all so desperate for people to give a shit about books that honestly we'll take what we can get. And I think wanting people to read more and to buy and support books and authors is simply the reason why a lot of people do start book blogs or join the book community, join book talk they're doing it because they love reading and you know they want to share it with other people who also love reading so it kind of feels like a bit of a double-edged sword because you're like yeah in one aspect people are knowing more about books maybe they'll pick the book up but then you know it is impacting smaller creators who are trying to engage with each other in the book community especially when it's being co-opted by people who don't seem authentic and sincere and they're just wanting to grow their brand is it helping print sales and the public industry as a whole well isn't that a good thing these are the type of questions i have when i'm you know seeing the latest celebrity book club come into fruition and i asked what some of my followers thought in a like question thing on instagram and asked them what they thought of celebrity book clubs yay or nay i said most people said nay but i'll read some responses someone said i don't religiously follow any but i think they are a great way to promote literacy and certain authors some even align with my own book tastes dua lipa has some banger wrecks in her book club i recommend overall i might have a cursory interest in them once a year but i appreciate they might do more for casual readers which i think you know celebrity book clubs aren't something that someone who already reads a lot is gonna sort of listen to or follow maybe they'll glance at it and see what the latest release is but they're not gonna follow it religiously someone said first thought ridiculous literal eye roll second i have no control over it also if someone thinks as it as a way to parasocially connect with a celeb you do you because celebrities doing these side ventures within the brand in a way that influencers do it's kind of only strengthening the parasocial relationship which we don't really want to be doing. Someone said low-key against it as some of them come across as so fake, but that's not the case for every. Someone else, they lack authenticity and oversaturate the space, which is something that a lot of people have been mentioning in the smaller book community that I'm involved in. They don't like the way that they're kind of co-opting something that's been built by smaller creators. But then some people are saying, yay, yes, I like them. Someone else said, yay and nay. Do they really read the books they recommend? question mark and someone else said it depends on what type of books they promote in their book club. Finally, I'll just read one more. Someone said, I follow Bellatrist back in 2020 and so many of the books were three stars at best. So, you know, that person certainly doesn't have trust in Bellatrist. <laughs> In conclusion, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that larger celebrities are sort of creating a place that people can commune and have something to put their energy into, especially something like books, because it's always great for people to read more. That's something we all want in the book community. And if they truly love the book and the author, that's a good thing, in my opinion. But I also don't think we should hold too much trust in what a celebrity is recommending because they have teams of people around them we don't know if they're just attaching the name to it and maybe they're not even reading the books or they don't really believe in the books and they just want to make the brand seem more interesting and it's like more of a profit driven thing for them but i also think we can't be gatekeeping the book community and 
I think we will see more celebrity book clubs but with more people in the community as that person said in the question I read out it will oversaturate the community but I think that won't be a good thing for celebrities either because if they're coming into it for it to be more of a lucrative business venture like say Reese Witherspoon's has been the more people involved the less lucrative it will be so I also think with more celebrities joining we'll see more celebrities leaving yeah but one final thought like gold says in the article my working theory about all of this is straightforwardly cynical celebrities mostly use books to add another layer to their persona carrying around a status handbag shaped like piles of paper with pages their rationales may vary but cultivating bookishness is a good way as any to transition from one career phase to a more multi-dimensional one in the same way that a former disney team might guest star on law and order SVU as a murder suspect in order to graduate to more mature roles. I think currently this is something celebrities have involved themselves in because it's good for the brand and I quite agree with what Gold says and you know it's something different for them to do, something different for them to promote. We all seen how they were with NFTs and that didn't really work out well did it that was embarrassing we're just like you we're just like regular people we just have millions of pounds millions of dollars and lots of privilege i think when their interests change so will what the pushing out maybe the book club will die and something else will come to fruition but i just think it seems more prominent now because there is a boom of the celebrity book clubs at this current time but i do think we'll see them dwindling away those who love to read will stay and those who don't they'll be off the skeptic in me thinks that it's a fad for a lot of these celebrities but then there's also a part of me that's conflicted and i'm like well at least people are seeing books and reading l hunt right in her Guardian article, Legally Bookish. If people are mo more likely to read a book because someone they recognise recommends it, that's to everyone's benefit. That individual will then find something for themselves in a book way beyond the original recommendation. So, you know, I do have both views. I have more of the sceptical view and then more of the, maybe it'll get people into reading. I'm on the fence. So yeah, there are my thoughts on celebrity book clubs. This was a little bit of a different video for me. You know, I structured it more like a video essay. Let me know if you like this structure of video and if you want me to make more videos like this. Mabel loved it. Let me know your opinions on celebrity book clubs below. Nobody asked, but I will personally say that I think Dua Lipa's got the best celebrity book club, so she has diverse taste in books and she seems like, you know, she wants to make sure she's reading diversely and I've read a lot of the books she recommends and we have similar tastes. So the articles that I read as well, I'll leave them linked below. That was the video for today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.